right, welcome everybody uh, to the International Falls Regular City Council meeting for Monday, March uh, 1st, 2021. Uh, we are available on Blue Jeans Online. Uh, all of the council is present, so I won't go through all of the uh, Minnesota statutes that allow us to not be here. Um, the first thing uh, we will do is pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, the first item is to approve the agenda with any additions or deletions, and I don't believe we have any of those this evening. Actually, we do have one addition. Um, uh, I would like to add uh, appointments to the cemetery board. So the chair would entertain a motion to accept the agenda with that addition. Move. We have a motion by Councillor Krause. Second. We have a second by Councillor Buller. <clears throat> Any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries. 5-0. Next, we have the... Um, Minutes from our February 16th, 2021 meeting. Chair would entertain a motion to accept those minutes. So move. We have a motion by Councillor Deach. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Holden. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. Motion carries 5-0. Next is audience. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the city council? Casey, if you'd like to come up and uh, speak into that microphone. Sure. Do I have my mask on? Uh, not when you're speaking, no. And just turn on the microphone. They got the button on the very top. There you are. There you go. There you go. All righty. Thank you. How's it going? Uh, I'm Casey Marook. I've been here for 21 years, uh, and I know that this blight thing has been an ongoing issue my entire life. Um, with that being said, I would like to conduct a town-wide cleanup on my own cost, and uh, that's that's pretty much it. If if there's anybody in the community that has anything laying in their in their yard, you know, piles of wood bricks, uh, tires, computers, even stuff inside their house, I will haul it away for free. Um, you know, it's, I've been hearing, I've been hearing everybody in the community for all my life and it, it something needs to be done about it. Uh, you guys have been doing a good, a good job with some things, but I think more can be done. And with this summer, I'd like to, I'd like to help out with that. And I'd, I'd like your guys's, uh, positive inputs on that too. Um, I've got some ideas that I think could spark this town and do some good things. Okay. Any questions for Casey? Please. Another question. I've been following you on Facebook and I think you've got some good ideas there. I think you've got a big job ahead of you. Give you credit for starting this out and hopefully it'll succeed. Thank you. I have Please. actually a question for Councillor Deach. Do we have any plans to revive the ad hoc uh, blight committee, or where are we at on that? Well, we haven't even discussed that yet. Yeah, I know. It, because of the blight, everything's been kind of laying, or not the blight, because of the pandemic, everything's been kind of laying low. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully this summer we can get something going again. And the reason I bring it up, because I think that would be a great spot for Mr. Marook to join us and uh, have a voice at that table. We have an ad hoc blight committee that meets to like help set up like citywide cleanup and different things. Um, unfortunately, the pandemic's kind of shelved that, but right, um, it was going it was going quite strong prior, and then just kind of fell by the wayside. But I'd definitely like to keep you in the loop on that if we're able to start meeting again. 
Yeah, that would be great. Um, I mean, I've been I've been working since I was five, six years old. Uh, this type of work is actually what I do, and I've been doing it so long that I know the resources all around town. I can get I can get materials disposed of for free. I can get you know I can have people in the community pitch in too. And there's there's businesses, there's you know people that you wouldn't even think of that want to just join in on this, and it's it's bringing people out of their homes, and it's really doing something, and that's what we need. This is a perfect time for that. I see and what, one of the things that I think of and, and we were, we've had dialogue on uh, Facebook Messenger with uh, having the fire marshal at, in, in place that's seeing all of these issues I mean that could be a really good liaison for him to be able to give the people that have uh, have situations that need to be rectified your number to be able to uh, meet with those people because then those are the, those are the issues that we we have in the community that kind of keeps the distance between the the city portion and just you know here's a here's a handout for someone who needs help getting things removed or whatever right. to be able to call you and be able to work with you directly on that yeah you know some people they just can't even get out of their house to do it it's it's not that they're you know trying Trying to be, you know, wasteful with stuff in their yard, or even even businesses around town have you know things that they need to work on, and I can be there to help. Okay. Any any other questions, Chief? Do you have anything to, to add or thoughts? Sounds like a great idea. I uh, I agree with the ad hoc committee as a place to start with that and move forward from there. And if you guys could exchange some phone numbers, too, so that we, we have someone to work with just as a liaison with uh, some of the people that may need help in the community, I think that would be a great fit. Thank you, Casey. Greatly yeah. appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Casey. Good job. Anybody else have anything to bring forward to the council? All right, so we will go on to old business. This is the second and final, did I miss? Yeah, yeah payment yeah. of claims. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's cool. I got you. All right, we will uh, do payments and claims. Uh, transfers uh, to the 101 General Fund, $157.60. And uh, accounts payable. Uh, City of International Falls claims $206,572.64. Airport Commission claims of $38,749.07. Runway Reconstruction Phase 2 claims of $66,971.66. And Phase 3 claims for the runway... Uh, Sixty-eight thousand sixty-five dollars, even for a total accounts payable and claims of three hundred and eighty thousand three hundred and fifty-eight dollars and sixty-seven cents. Chair would entertain a motion for the payments of claims. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Kraus. Do we have a second? Do we have a second? Okay. We have a second by Councillor Buller. Thought maybe you guys just didn't want to pay bills this month. All right. Uh, any any um, comments, concerns? Chair will call the question. Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. Motion carries 5-0. Next we go to old business. This is the second and final reading of contract ordinance 7, uh, I'm sorry, 973. This is the setting rates collected for revenue support for utility operations. Chair would entertain a motion to... Uh, have the second and final reading of the contract ordinance. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Buller. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Deach. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes. Motion carries 5 0. Next, we go to uh, the consent agenda. We have a handful of items on that. Uh, the first is the license renewal for Cine 5. That's uh, a restaurant license and a theater license. Approve the final uh, planning agreement with Northland Securities for Cobblestone Hotel Project. And approve the final uh, financial planning agreement with Northland Securities for the I Falls Properties LLC, and an updated uh, contact information for Deed Shovel Ready Flyer for the multimodal um, distribution area. Chair would entertain a motion to 
Um, the consent agenda. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Kraus. Do we have a second? All second. We have a second by Councillor Holden. Any? Oh, no, there is no discussion. I'll call the question. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes. Motion carries 5 0. Next, we have uh, a license application from Espresso Lane LLC doing business as the library for a restaurant license effective March 1st, 2021. Chair would entertain a motion to accept that uh, restaurant license. We have a motion by Councillor Buller. Do we have a second? A second. We have a second by Councillor Kraus. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And all abstain. Vote motion carries four for the motion and one abstention. Next, approve order for corrective action in the matter of a hazardous house at 1717 First Avenue West. City Attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. <clears throat> this is presented to the Council at the request uh, uh, of the Fire Marshal uh, and Kelly and Adam, uh, and um, it's been a problem property for a number of years. Uh, lots of complaints uh, from neighbors and people in the area, and um, even though we don't uh, currently uh, have. Uh, uh, a demolition program in place uh, and if we tear this down uh, there'd be uh, significant costs involved uh, it was the uh, thought of the group that we should uh, uh, move forward and, and, and get an order in place to do this um, there have been some discussions at one point in time the neighbor uh, was interested in uh, 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 maybe uh, buying the contract it's a complicated situation because the owner of the property sold it on a contract for deed a number of years ago uh the person that's currently been occupying it uh until it was deemed uh, not safe to occupy um is delinquent uh on the contract and is behind in taxes uh and so it's able to be uh, the contract's able to be canceled uh, but the owner hasn't wanted to go to that expense uh, and uh, uh, then just have it added to his taxes and, and uh, so he had talked about having the neighbor s selling it for a nominal sum to the neighbor and let the neighbor do all this because the neighbor would tear it down and it's the, the house is deemed not salvageable but the it's got a fairly decent garage on it that could be salvaged uh, and so my thought is is that if the uh, council passes this we don't necessarily need to file it with the court yet uh, and pay those fees and start that whole process uh, but uh, if we reach a point where we want to move forward we can do so much more quickly uh, and we'd have this in place uh, to serve on the owner uh, and the uh, uh, person in possession of the contract for deed uh, gives us gives us a little more leverage. Uh, and I don't any comments that Kelly, you're probably the one that's worked the longest on this <coughs> property. And I don't think there's a lot of comments, but it's been a pretty big issue. It's the one I sent to all of you here about a week ago at property. Um, hey Kelly, can you come forward so we can get it on the microphone? I really expected you to be like, no, we're good. <laughs> No, it, 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 it's been a problem property for some time. We've dealt with this place numerous times through my tenure of the city. And uh, I thought it was very interesting when I sent that packet out to everyone here, is that in 2004 or 2005, that a demolition was requested by the owner that sold the contract for deed. Um, through my experiences, I would guess that he filled out the application, but he never got all the utilities disconnected prior to turning in the application, which would keep us from tearing it down at that time. And then what he did was sold to another property owner, or new on a contract, and he's did numerous repairs throughout the home, but according to the file, we've never had any record of it. Um, we never knew he did it, he never did the repairs. He, he applied for a 
siding and roofing permit since I've been here, since about 19, 2016, 2017 in that area. And he never completed any of it. So basically pulled everything off, just left it there. Been a pretty big thorn for the neighbors. Well, we got called to go turn the water back on at the property and when I went inside, that's when all the other things showed up that we have open wiring in the walls. We had um, covered up wiring, which we don't know what it did and no electrical inspection from the electrical uh, state electrical inspector. So that's why it's been deemed in this manner. Um, we've tried to work with the, the, the person quite a bit. He's actually had those letters sent to him where he was supposed to tell us what he was going to fix, the timeline it was going to take for him to fix it, what he was going to do, and basically all he wants us to do as a city, he wants me to go in there and tell him what to fix, how to fix it, and how long he can have to do it. Well, that's not the way permitting works. Permitting is the owner tells you what they're going to do, and it's our job to say that is correct or that is not enough or whatever, but he's never come up with any kind of a plan to say, hey, we're going to do it this way. So we've never denied him a permit, other than he's never came in with a plan to get a permit. So I guess that's where it sits with me. Okay. Any questions for Steve or Kelly on this? I guess my one question based off what you had said, Steve, is how much um, how much time would we we hold before we, we put it to the court system? You said we can do the order, but I mean, how much time are we looking at between? Well, I guess you, it could be something that I, if you want me to, I could bring it back to the council, uh, or uh, the group, uh, Kelly and I uh, and Jarrett have been meeting almost every Friday morning to review all the outstanding cases and different things, and, and now we're uh, kind of taking this additional administrative step, kind of in between the ticketing and, and going to criminal action. Uh, and so uh, uh, you could just leave it to, to my discretion if you want to, or you could you know, pass a resolution and I bring it back to court, or bring it back to the council before filing with the court. Okay. All right. Uh, Chair would entertain a motion to approve the corrective action uh, in the matter of the hazardous house at 1717 First Avenue West. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Second. We have a second by uh, Councillor Deach. And just for clarification, I'm asking you approve the order. Uh, not We're not going to actively take the steps for the city to make the corrections. Uh, but we'll be requesting that this correction be made by the property owner. Okay. And then just to clarify what uh, the city attorney had said, do we want this to come back to council or do we want them to be at their their uh, discretion? I would say at their discretion. I would think at their discretion as well. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So if there's no questions, I'll call the question. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Thank Thank you gentlemen. gentlemen. Thank you. Next, we have the resolution approving an exempt permit for Falls Memorial Hospital Foundation doing business as Rainy Lake Medical Center Foundation to conduct a raffle at 1400 Highway 71 on September 1, 2021. Chair would entertain a motion. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Krause. Second. We have a second by Councillor Holden. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 5 0. Next, we have a resolution approving an exempt permit for the Bronco Bass Fishing Club to conduct a raffle on th at 307th Street on August 11th, 2021. Chair would entertain a motion on that one. I'll we'll make a motion. Second. Uh, we have a motion by Councillor Holden and we have a second by Councillor Buller. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes. Motion carries 5 0. Slowly roll. Next, we have uh, the. Uh, Sorry, the Minnesota Department of Transportation funding assistance through the local road uh, improvement program. Chair would entertain a motion uh, for that uh, resolution. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Buller. 
Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Krause. This is the one that was at the council last time. Um, do you have anything to bring forward, Ted, on this one? No. Thank you for standing up for that. <laughs> All right. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, with any discussion, call the question. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes. Motion carries 5 0. <clears throat> Next, we have resolution supporting GO bond proceeds grant, uh, grant agreement, construction grant for the reconstruction runway 13. 31 phase three project. <coughs> Chair would entertain a motion for that resolution. Move. We have a motion by Councillor Buller. Do we have a second? All second. We have a second by Councillor Krause. <laughs> any any discussion? Got any info? I was just going to ask, Ken, could you give us some background on this? What, what this will include is, if you remember phase one, they did a thousand feet on the main runway. Yeah. Okay. They had to do that in order to keep the price down on the rest of that main runway. So this is going to be the rest of the main runway from that thousand feet where they did before, point back to uh, 332. That's the next project. Okay. Okay. Well, great. <clears throat> All right, Chair would entertain, uh, or we already did a motion. I'll call the question. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes, motion carries 5-0. Next we have a um, resolution approving the salary change for the interim city administrator. Uh, this went through HR, I believe? Yep. Okay, can we all entertain a motion from HR? So moved. We have a motion, yeah. we have a motion by Councillor, uh, I'm sorry, Councillor Deach, and a second by Councillor Holden. Discussion. How did you guys come up with this? Just so we can have some discussion on a big well. ticket item. My go feelings, I, I don't know, Leon, you want to speak first? No, go ahead. You do. My feelings are she's going to be doing the work of two people. Her job plus Ken's job. Um, a lot of responsibility, and I know she can do it, and she's done it before, and I think she deserves uh, the salary for it. So that's what we decided, and, and Leon can... More work, more time. It just makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Any questions for the HR committee? All right. We have a motion and a second. Call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 5-0. Next, we have uh, some other human resources committee recommendations. Uh, one is to approve a one-year labor agreement between the City of International Falls and the International Union of Operating Engineers, the Local 49. Uh, 49ers for the Public Works and Administration Office clerical staff January 1, 2021 to December 31st, 2021. Chair would entertain that motion. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Deach. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Holden. Council have any questions or concerns with the uh, agreement? Mr. Mayor, please. I don't necessarily have a concern with the agreement. I'm just wondering why we're doing a one-year deal. Uh, this uh, Brian Briggs, which is our former counselor, was the main person involved in this, along with Ken. And it was decided because of the COVID issues on everything that we would go one year, and then we would start hopefully start negotiations June, July for the upcoming years. Makes sense, but thank you. So the ideal thing would be once this is done, pandemic and what we know with the LGA money and stuff that we would try to get back to a three-year contract the next time. So okay. like it's been done for ever. It's been three years for a long time. So. Yeah, I'm talking with the union rep. I asked him the same thing, and he said that there's that's a pretty normal thing this year is a one-year contract just because of what's going on. So. Okay. All right, any other questions? I, I just want to thank, uh, again, City Administrator Ken uh, Anderson and um, former City Councilor Brian Briggs for doing 
99.9% of the contract negotiations for the city. Um, and we still have two contracts to do, but um, we're, we're getting there. And I just want to say thank you to Ken and Brian and obviously the negotiation staff on both sides. So thank you. All right, I will, if there's no other questions or concerns regarding that uh, first agreement, I'll call the question. Aye. 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 Can I'll vote yes? Motion carries 5 0. Next uh, is a discussion if there's a need for assistance. Uh, from a search firm to fill the city administrator's vacancy. Please. Okay, basically we brought this up at our last meeting at HR and um, we, just got, we said we haven't done anything yet as far as I know. Correct. And we've got to get rolling on finding someone to replace our city administrator. And uh, various avenues we could go, I don't know which is the best, I guess that would be up to the council. Ken has some, or Ken has some ideas. You discuss those. Would you sh care to share those, Ken? Uh, thank you, Councillor Deach. Generally speaking, when you're looking for um, <clears throat> department head level positions, uh, you know the city council can just uh, advertise for the vacancy, receive applications, go through uh, a review of the applications, interview the top candidates that you see, and then move forward with an appointment or you can solicit the assistance of a professional search firm to help you find and go through a process uh, to do a search. And generally a search firm would be involved in putting together a community profile, a position profile that talks about what the typical duties and responsibilities are, and then try and distribute that profile to prospective candidates that are already in the field and that can be done to, through um, organizations like the League of Minnesota Cities, the Association of uh, Minnesota Counties, as well as adjacent states even to try and solicit interest. So one of those would be the typical process that you might follow and, and I think the Human Resources Committee agreed that uh, they wanted to have a conversation with the City Council about how you want to proceed um, um, in filling the vacancy in this position. Any thoughts from anybody else? What kind of okay. costs are involved with that? Uh huh. What kind of costs are involved with that? Do you check into that? Well, I think you could start with the League of Cities first. I, I think you could go there and it wouldn't cost you anything just to get their recommendation. League of Cities has been helping other cities for years, you know. And, uh, you could start there, get their ideas what could be done, or we can as a council try it but I think uh, in the past when that's been done it took a long time um, so if it goes out there at League of Cities would be the like on the school board when you got a question on something like that you would go to the Minnesota School Board Association well this is the League of Cities and you ask them questions and you know it's a good place to start any other questions? Ken? Well, I would just add that, I mean, we can go to the league, but the league is just going to basically tell you the same thing. There's a number of different processes you can do. I, I'm aware of three or four, maybe five firms that do this search thing, and, and so you would just send, uh, you know, the council needs to decide what are the duties and responsibilities that you want to see out of the position of city administrator. Do you want to leave it the same? Do you want to review the job description to see it's different? A consultant with a search firm can assist you with that process and help you go through a process process to decide where are your priorities and what do you want to see out of that new position and generally it identifies as I said priorities what do you see for the next two years for a, a person in this position and you don't have to use a search firm I mean I, I would venture a guess that the process the price is going to be eighteen thousand dollars and perhaps more depending on who you use so it's not there's an expense with it but um, I think when the city had gone through the hiring process for the position when I was hired they went through it once without a search firm and I'm not sure why um, they chose to Readvertised, and then they went through a uh, the assistance of a search firm. At the time, it was Springstead Incorporated, and the gentleman that did it is Dave Unmocked, who now serves as the executive director of the League of Minnesota City. So, uh, he actually served as a consultant assisting the city council at that time with that search. So, so how long did it take? It took a long time, what I remember, right? Total time. I think from the time that the previous 
the administrator previous to me resigned in the time that I was hired, it was a year. And I remember seeing the first advertisement in the summer of 2014, I'm sorry, 13. And I think the hiring process, the, the second time the council went through the process, the applications were due in October, and then the hiring decision was made at the end of January in 2014. So. Well, I guess for myself, I'd like to see it go through a search for... Mr. Mayor, please. I, I wonder if we couldn't have a, uh, a human resources meeting um, during the cow and have the entire city council um, involved in that meeting and potentially take a look at uh, the job description and see exactly what we want to do moving forward because we're, we have an opportunity to mold the position how we see fit at this time. So I, I don't disagree that hiring a, a firm would be a, a bad idea. I just want to maybe have an opportunity to, to sit down together and look at it and kind of see what we want it to look like before we turn around and hand it over to. And we can make our decision there if we want to go through a firm or, or a league. But I think we should, I honestly think we should take a look at the job description first yeah, before we make a decision on how we're going to hire. Sure. I guess my only concern is we have a history of dragging our feet. <laughs> we do. And this, this should have been started. And it's, it's my fault as well as everybody else. This should have been started right away as soon as we knew Ken was resigning. We should have got the ball rolling. Uh, I am fine with going before the committee of the whole meeting and discussing it. That's fine. But I do not want it bogged down. Well, we would have the, the we could put it on the agenda for next Monday's committee of the whole meeting and then give ourselves a recommendation for the following Monday for the city council meeting and start rolling right there. That's fine. So it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be but two weeks from tonight that we could make a decision as to what the hiring is going to look like. But I still think prior to, to deciding how we're going to hire somebody, we should make sure and know exactly what we want to hire. Does that make sense? Uh, it, yes it, and no. We, we know we're going to hire somebody. And, and does it make a big difference if we want to know what our criteria is right now or if we're just going to look and see what... what uh, route we're going to go. Do we know what the qualifications of that individual are going to be if we decide to make a change in the requirements of what we want them to be able to do? Please. We could act on it today to say yes, we're going to use a search firm and then start looking into that and then And I guess that's what I'm looking then, at. Then we're two weeks we don't have to make a decision on what we hands. want for a city administrator just that we're going to get this rolling. I just got to say, this is like the best discussion ever. <laughs> so, number one, here, here's what my thoughts were. My thoughts were right where Joe is. I really think we need to have a committee of the whole meeting and have a discussion on uh, what we're looking for in a city administrator, what, uh, what we are falling behind on as a city so we can use that as an emphasis of what we're searching for. And I think it would be really, really good for our department heads to be at that meeting too, so we can have the discussion with what what is going to help facilitate them in their jobs so that we can get things moving and finalized. So I'd really like to see that committee of the whole meeting um, have this discussion with the, the department heads present. And with that being said, I, I also agree we should have hire a firm so maybe we could Tonight have that uh, motion to hire a firm mm -hmm. and we will um, start collecting you know information on on that process but know that on Monday we're going to really hammer out what what we're searching for in that individual and, and mr. mayor the by only I would I, I agree and I think that's a wonderful idea but I half wonder if we shouldn't call a standalone committee of the whole meeting to do this and the reason is because the Monday Monday's meeting has a, a fairly packed agenda as it is and I, I really feel like if we're going to talk to the department heads that's going to be a lengthy conversation we this could be a one two three hour meeting so, so we'll just kick off the stuff that you wanted to talk about. That's up to you, I'm buddy. I mean, <laughs> do you want to cancel no. all that? That's cool. But I just, I just feel like if we're going to invite all of the, right? If we're going to invite everybody, I mean, we could do it 
we could even schedule it for next week to give everybody time. We still we can't make any determination right there. We would then throw it to the, the following Monday City Council meeting. But I would like to have I'd like that to be the only agenda item. Just have some time to have an open and honest, and that gives everybody an opportunity to put some thoughts together. Well, what I'm looking at, as I say, just looking at the search firm. That's all we need is a, is a motion to say let's look at the search firm. Yep. And then we can take all this other fluff that everybody's coming out with and throw that into the call meeting. All we need to do is a direction of what we're going to do. Are we going to advertise ourselves or are we going to advertise with the firm? I, I go along with the search firm too because apparently the last time it took a long time until they did get a search firm and, and got it rolling. Chair would entertain a motion at this time. I'll make the motion to go with the search firm. Okay, we have a motion to go with the search firm. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second by Councillor Holden. Any additional discussion? Uh, Mayor? Yes? So is, by go with the search firm, do you want to have a letter sent out and ask for proposals to assist the city in doing that? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yes, sir. Any other discussion? Hearing none, call a question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 5 0. So then we will have, uh, I will set up a meeting um, with the interim uh, city administrator to hammer out that, uh, what we're looking for, and I'll, I'll call that meeting for next week, some point. Sounds good. Perfect. All right. Um, so, I think so, C so C is kind of a moot point at this point. Approve updates to Exhibit A of Ordinance 26, 5th Series Annex for Land and Resubmittal to the Office of Administrative Hearings. Chair would entertain a motion. So moved. So we have a, a motion to approve the updates. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a, a second by Councillor Buller. Ken, is this going to fix it? Well, that's a good question, Mr. Mayor. It, the intention is that it will, but um, so the, the council's already adopted a, an ordinance, and when we submitted this um, this application to the Office of Administrative Hearings, they sent it back because uh, in reviewing the legal descriptions, it did not. The attachments did not include a copy of the plat that was referenced in the legal description. So we've provided that. There's actually two of them that will be included in here. One is for the auditor's plat number 10, and the other is for the plat of Goldville. And then um, we did some revisions to the mapping, and um, you'll see the aerial photos that identified the lots. And the reason why um, we're <coughs> just asking that this be on the council agenda for your ratification and approval is that the in the area where the sanitary sewer ponds are is the parcel number that was assigned for the property where the actual ponds are that are owned by North Cooch. They use that parcel number for our property. They swapped them. So basically there's a new parcel number. So just to keep the record in the minutes and the official progression of this clean, we wanted to make sure that the council was approving the ministerial type of uh, changes to the the Exhibit A, which is attached to the ordinance that you've already adopted. So assuming that you move forward, then I've drafted a letter that will go to Star Holman of the Office of Administrative Hearings and uh, send this information out of them. And, and again, just as I understand the process is, is once they get it, they deem it to be complete. There is an admin fee, I believe, uh, for the amount of acreage that we're including, it's a maximum of $600. So um, they will, they forward this information on to the Minnesota Department of Transportation to verify that the parcel descriptions are accurate and that the properties do in fact abut on the city, existing contiguous city limit, or they're contiguous to the city limits of International Falls already. If they are, then they'll just administratively approve it and notify us. Excellent. All right, any questions for the city administrator? And I'll call the question. Aye. 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 No vote yes. Motion carries 5-0. Next update on the property acquisition. City Attorney. Mr. Mayor and Council, uh, we have uh, been working with uh, 
uh, Steve, uh, the owner of the property, has an attorney in Duluth. Uh, we sa I sent him, uh, or before the attorney was involved, I sent the owner uh, a proposed purchase agreement. We had reached oral agreement, uh, sent it to him, his attorney has contacted me uh, Friday and again today. They got some minor changes that they want to make. Uh, he was supposed to email those to me today, but I, I didn't receive them today. Uh, uh, he's aware. Uh, the hope is that we would have a proposed purchase agreement to present to the council at the next city council meeting two weeks from today. Uh, I don't see any issues or any problems, so it looks like it's moving ahead smoothly. Uh, and. Um, in terms of the uh, phase one environmental study, uh, it looks as though uh, the cost of that is likely to be uh, covered by the grant. Have you heard anything further on that, Ken? Or? Um, Council Mayor, no, the, um, I do know that the consulting firm for the ARDC that's working with the uh, Brownfields Assessment Program has prepared a uh, site eligibility form, I believe it was called, and submitted that. Um, I believe it was to the U.S. EPA, it might have been to the Minnesota MPCA to review that. They thought there would be about a two-week review period, um, and after we get notification that the, the site is eligible for that, then we can move forward with actually uh, having the Phase 1 environmental site assessment, assessment completed on that property, and the grant funds will pay 100% of those costs, and Stantec would be the firm doing the work. So. Hmm. And the purchase agreement is uh, contingent upon a, a successful phase one study that doesn't require a phase two study. Uh, so uh, that's where it's at. Yeah. If we have issues in the phase one study, uh, uh, then we have to renegotiate or we don't have any obligations uh, uh, unless we receive a favorable phase one study. Okay. okay. Fantastic. Look forward to that. Thank cool. you. Next uh, is appointments to the cemetery board. I would like to appoint uh, councilors Kraus and um, Buller to the cemetery board. Are those one year terms or two year terms? It's one year. One year terms. To each one year terms. Re Chair would reappoint. Reappoint. Chair would uh, entertain a motion for those reappointments. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Second. We have a second by Councillor Deach. Discussion? Call the question. Aye. Aye. Abstain. Abstain. You guys are so silly. Uh, for Joey, abstain for me. <laughs> I'll do the same. <laughs> Three for the motion and two abstentions. All right, reports of boards, committees, department heads, city administrator. Well, Mayor, just a, a few brief comments. First, I, I, I do want to thank the council and uh, particularly the staff. Uh, there was a nice reception for my pending retirement this evening, so I want to thank the staff for the effort that they did in organizing that. I also want to thank everybody for making my seven years here working as a city administrator a uh, an enjoyable experience and a productive experience, and I'm hoping that we made a difference in the community and. I'm actually excited for our community and, and the prospects that we have moving forward with some of the projects that are underway. And, um, and I just wish everybody the best. So I wanted to pass that on to the council. Uh, secondly, um, um, as the city attorney pointed out, um, we, do, we have moved forward fairly quickly. There was a kickoff meeting last week for the Brownfields Assessment Program. And again, that's funding that the um, Arrowhead Regional Development Commission was able to secure with um, the whole Arrowhead region. Basically, there's $600,000 available, and that is the program that we'll be using to assist in doing this assessment of the property that we want to acquire. So it saves the seller from having to pay that cost, and it also saves us as a buyer having to pay any portion of that. Um, I do believe that those funds can be used for a phase two environmental study if that's necessary. But uh, again, we just had the initial kickoff meeting and we'll have to see how that progresses. But um, I'm glad to see that we were able to bring some outside resources into um, moving forward and, and trying to facilitate a property sale in this case. Um, and then I just want to say that um, 
I think um, all the work that's been done um, on these labor agreements, I wanted to thank Brian Briggs, and I see he's not here any longer, but I appreciate the council's action on the labor agreement that we approved today. Uh, I We have had some just minor uh, dot in the I's, cross the T's kinds of things back and forth, punctuation things back and forth with the union steward for that one. So we'll get that cleaned up and I'll make sure that the council gets a full and executed copy of that agreement once it's been signed. So I don't think I have anything else that I wanted to share with the council and just a final thank you. Thank you. City Attorney. Mayor and Council. You could have just sat there all night. <laughs> could have. Yeah. Uh, I, too, would like to thank Ken. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, he and I have worked closely together these last seven years, and, and uh, uh, he's been a phenomenal help to me. Uh, and uh, our city is a much better place uh, because of his uh, help uh, and assistance. And uh, uh, I'm going to miss you greatly, Ken, and, and uh, I wish you the best uh, in your future endeavors. Uh, I didn't do uh, an updated criminal blight report for this week because the very little changes uh, since the last one. Uh, we haven't started any new criminal cases because we're going to try this administrative kind of interim approach to hopefully avoid more criminal cases. But we have, uh, I've been meeting weekly uh, with uh, Kelly and Jared uh, uh, and Adam has sat in a couple times, uh, and so I think that's kind of the plan going forward, is that uh, uh, right now my office has, we have, we're not typically open to the public on Fridays, uh, so we've been kind of using Friday morning to meet uh, in my office uh, uh, with the city people that are directly doing it uh, and go over the problem cases and, and work out a plan of action for the next week, so uh, we're, uh, you know, I think having this fire marshal position uh, as a full-time thing uh, is really going to make my life easier moving forward on Blight, and I think it's going to help us uh, clean up the city much more quickly, and, and uh, I congratulate uh, the council on making that decision, and, and uh, I think Jared's doing a great job, and, and uh, uh, Kelly and Adam uh, are fine too, but I think they... <laughs> Breathe a, they, they breathe a sigh of relief that Jared's there to do all the detail work because uh, it used to be whenever Kelly and Adam showed up at my office, they'd spend a couple minutes apologizing before we ever got down to work. So with Jared, there's no need for apology. You know, department heads can talk too. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> Any questions that anybody has? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, department heads, do you have anything to say? <laughs> nothing. Not, nothing. All right. Uh, council, committees, boards, commissions. Mayor. Please. Uh, this was brought up a little bit earlier by Councillor Krause, and, and it was kind of emphasized on uh, Mr. Shimon's report there. The ad hoc blight committee. Now, do we want that committee? I guess the reason is we, we do not want myself and a bunch of uh, members on the ad hoc Blake committee trying to micromanage what Mr. Baldwin's doing. <coughs> Mr. Baldwin has been out there and he's been driving around, he's been looking, the same type of thing that the committee did. I, I guess we don't want, in my opinion, we don't want too many fingers in there directing Mr. Baldwin or, or telling him what to do. I think that's a great conversation to have at, uh, at the Committee of the Whole one of these days. Uh, there's plenty of time. Yes, and, there is. And the, the one thing that I've always kind of looked at that committee as doing is, you know, obviously coming up with, uh, with solutions of where we've at. And they've done those community cleanups. And I, I don't know if... Uh, if that's something that's on Jared's plate or on the administration's plate, but if uh, if you think that that's something that we could look at getting rid of, the last thing I really believe we need is more boards and commissions. But you know, I, I want to make sure that it's the right move for for the community too. Right, I, I agree. But as, as I say, you get too many people in there trying to tell a man how to do his job. 
All right, I, I will have further conversation about that, but I, I, I respect that a lot. Any other thoughts on that? I, I think you kind of hit it. Yeah. That the the only the only place I really see it is kind of a, an opportunity. It does give people an opportunity for public comment that they might not do anywhere else. And I do, rem I mean, remember back when uh, it first started that we did the, the citywide cleanup. Obviously COVID has, has curtailed that, but it, it was a good opportunity to kind of organize it and get everything put together and figure out when and how and where. Um, but aside from that, you're, you're probably right. Like to micromanage makes absolutely no sense. I think more like an organizational, kind of like a um, mobilize the, the volunteers, it's good for that, but you're right. Like micromanaging Jared, I don't think that's the I don't think that's the job of that committee at all. Right. And it doesn't need to be done. He, so far, he's doing a great job, and I assume he's going to continue. So, well, and and the one thing that I've always thought about that ad hoc committee is we needed that we needed that Jared Baldwin or that uh, that fire marshal position, whatever it is. If we can come up with a time frame, and, and this is just my thoughts, right? This, is, this isn't anything we've had in deep conversation, but if we could come up with the time frame where, he, where they're out there and they're seeing where the blight is and where the problems are and where uh, we need to, to focus energy, and then we, like a month down the road, we have a community cleanup, and then we can make that transition transition from these are the areas that we're really having a problem with in the community addresses or whatever work with these community people to go and help those those areas and then give them a place to bring it to and if we can make that that transition then there may not be any fines on the back end because we get that cleaned up as a community, like a community working together. So that's kind of where I've always seen that. That's what I see with Casey here. That's what I, I, I see with uh, community organization. It's our job as a city to give them an outlet to, to be able to fix some of the problems. But we also need to have that liaison somehow, which is the ad hoc committee, to put it all together. And that, that's kind of where I see it, but I'd love to explore this conversation further. So, all right, any other committees, boards, commissions? Did, uh, I heard a rumor that the airport got um, a grant. Got a million six thousand for a racial grant yeah. on the grant. Yeah. Nice. So that that should uh, that should also help our financial situation in twenty twenty one. I actually have one one report from uh, we had the Kuchiching Housing Initiative meeting last week and um, Currently, that that commission is looking at putting together. There's a local realtor and uh, a couple other members of that committee that are looking to put together a vacant lot list. And really, what they want to know is vacant lots that are available, not just vacant vacant lots, but lots that could potentially be sold. Um, there's a there's an individual. Uh, actually, I can. It's public information. It's Jeff Hausman is looking to do some investing in the community, and uh, so. Right Right now, they're looking to a Shannon Arnold that's looking to put together a list of all of the vacant buildable lots that are available in the city of International Falls. And we also talked about, and the city administrator was in that meeting, we talked about some potential lots that the city owns. And really what they're looking for is shovel-ready lots that, have, that, are, that are already on the utility lines um, to potentially put up some uh, new houses and uh, some apartments, townhomes, that kind of thing. So. Um, that was a really good, really good meeting. And Jared, you've been working uh, on trying to put together a vacant home list, correct? Uh, we put together a vacant house registration or vacant property. Can you come up to the microphone? This was just my way of getting you to get some exercise. Um, we put together a vacant property registration that uh, we'll be bringing to the committee the whole next week um, with all of our applications along with the property maintenance code um, and the repeal of some current ordinances. So we have nothing that we've 
move forward with. We have the registration, the paperwork ready to go, mm -hmm. but we're just waiting for that transition from our current code of ordinances to um, the property maintenance code so we can have all that kind of implemented all at the same time. But you're coming up with a, a list of vacant properties right now, correct? Yeah, I do have a list going that currently, you know, that we've been made aware of. Um, you know, there's a lot that I've written down that it doesn't look like anybody's been in all winter, but I don't know 100% if they're vacant, if they're snowbirds, that kind of stuff. So um, I started compiling a list. It's got to do a little bit more homework to actually see if they're, they're vacant. Do you have a vacant lot list as well or no? Um, there, there is a way that I've been kind of looking into that. Um, there is, you know, we have all our tax forfeited properties um, that I do have a current list of that um, in the office downstairs. Um, there is, you know, there is, you know, quite a few other lots like Councillor Krause said in that housing meeting that are owned by the adjoining property owners. Um, so it just depends on, you know, what exactly they're looking for. And, okay. and uh, you know, there's going to be some opportunities coming up too with some um, demolitions um, that we're going to be pushing over the summer too. Ordering, yeah. Yeah, so um, there is some options there. And uh, as far as the, the blight stuff goes with some of these properties too while I'm up here is um, I, uh, I handed out um, the first administrative fee over the weekend to a property and I have um, over the last week and a half uh, issued 15 notices um, two properties where it started to warm up and the garbage is starting to show up already so um, you know I think all this stuff that we've done over the last few months is is going to be good to get moving and get into place so we can move forward with all these different steps that we're going to be taking you know our rental licensing our vacant house you know some new stuffs with um, these temporary structures storage containers um, they're popping up more and more with the price of building materials being expensive right now. We're seeing a lot more of it, and uh, they last a year or two, and it just creates issues for us. So, doing a great job. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks too. Thank you. Any other boards and commissions? If not, we'll have uh, one report of the mayor. I, uh, I want to say thank you to Ken Anderson for the last seven years that uh, he spent with the city. Um, today is, his, well, this is, week is his last week here, but this will be his last meeting. I have a certificate of appreciation for Mr. Kenneth R. Anderson. This is hereby to recognize his outstanding public service to the citizens and city of International Falls. Thank you so much, Ken. Very nice. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. All right. We have uh, anybody from audience that would like to bring something to the council? Please. Yes. Uh, I forgot to mention this earlier, but to kick this off with the uh, spring cleaning, I will be hosting a free car wash at Quarters Gas Station. This will be on March 28th from 10.30 to 6 o'clock. Uh, anybody can come through, just strive on through. If you want to keep your windows up, you can, and we'll take care of you. Okay. And then uh, I'm officiating the day April 4th. That's when I'll be out doing my cleaning. Okay. Um, Another thing I'd like to ask, uh, is there any programs in this town that offer uh, a work license? I've been from 2017, I got a DWI and uh, I lost my license. And ever since then, I have, uh, I have a couple driving after revs on three wheelers. Mm -hmm. uh, with the ATV laws being changed, um, is there any way that I can get like some kind of permit to use ATV and trailer to be able to get to the dump through the grade? I did, I did take the steps to go through uh, Virginia to take my license test. I am insured. I do have my uh, license paper, but 
for some reason, there, I can't find any program that offers uh, a limited license for even in town here. It's uh, pretty difficult, but if I can't get that, I'll I'll have to make do with what I got and go I, from I there. don't even know the answer to that. I don't even know where to start. I've I've called hundreds of people in the last four years, and it's I, it's a dead end each time. So I figured if I brought it to the attention here, maybe I could figure the right direction to go. Yeah, I assume that's above the city. Uh, Steve, can you help us with that one? We can talk over by the state. We, the city, wouldn't have any authority to grant that kind of license. I mean, we could talk to our chief of police and agree that, you know, for a, if there's a special project or something that you, you know, that that we wouldn't prosecute you that day, you know, if certain guideline, you know, I mean, there's something we could probably do to get around it if it was a special event kind of yeah. thing. Uh, for instance, if we were needing something to like clean up the city or whatever, but my, my guess is that we could, you know, if you're coordinating this thing, we could find drivers and vehicles and, you know, mm -hmm. we could do that in the past with our cleanup days. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in terms of, you have an ability to operate, you know, either ATVs or vehicles, you know, you're going to have to do that through the state of Minnesota because we would not have the ability to uh, counterman what they do. Okay, thank you. Yep, thank you. Um, what I, I did call the state, I talked to them, and then what they did tell me, it was... Uh, it was two weeks ago on t on the day today. They did tell me that my license was clear to go, and then while we were waiting for it to go through online, it uh, rejected me till September. And this was after my uh, cleanup proposal, so that's kind of where I'm stuck right now. And if I can't get some kind of permit that lets me, you know, use an ATV to get to the grade to the dump, then I'm going to be walking down the street with a trailer in my hands. No, I'm serious, like I will. Okay. <laughs> well, well we, we really can't do anything from, above us for the, from the state, but we can, like Steve had said, we can help coordinate with rides and, and stuff like that for, for moving stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll you. see you guys around town then. All right. Appreciate All right. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. And then we have correspondence, uh, U.S. Census Bureau. The recognition letter, um, 2020 Census Community Partnership and Engagement Program, and the 2019 Water Fluorination uh, Quality Award, please. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to note that on the on the census, did, did you guys see that uh, the national self response rate for the census is 67 percent? In our region, it was 69.8 percent, and our region led the nation in self response. That's pretty significant, in my opinion. That needs to be shared. Great. So that's why we got the, the letter. Cool. All right. Uh, our next regular city council meeting is March 15th, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. This meeting is adjourned.